Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. Dave Honorado. So today we're going to talk about gear that we regret selling, and there's plenty of that. Yeah. <laughs> so much. We're sitting here trying to make a list of what we're... Here's the funny thing is that Dave remembers a lot of the gear that I regret selling because <laughs> I sold it to the music stores that he worked at. So it's he's true. telling me, he's like, oh yeah, what about that one? <laughs> I remember when you brought that in. I'm like, why are you selling that? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I remember there's a couple. I was like, are you sure? You know, No, so I sold – everything I sold is because I was broke. Yeah, well, me too. I mean that's usually I mean, that's, that's usually the case with everybody. I mean that's really the – Yeah, or just stupidity of one of those – like for me, sometimes it was like I was maybe just bored with something. I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah, but No, no. So, there's a couple things but, I sold that I, I don't know why I did. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, I did too. I, I, I have a lot. I don't know why I did. Yeah, so. that, that I could have kept – and I didn't. I, yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, you know. Okay, so you go first, Dave. Um, well, and this is in no order, so I'm just going to pull out of head. I, the first thing that hits my mind was I owned um, a 1962 SG Standard, like your 65. Right. Um, but it was owned by Joey Mullins of Badfinger. And it was his main SG from the, uh, I think, like 1970 to like uh, the early 80s. So, so on, he would have played. It was on every know, bad finger. Right? I mean, uh, no matter what, that, you know, all of that, day it, after day. And when I hear those guitar sounds like Baby Blue, I, I was listening to that in the car, and I love those guitar sounds so much yeah. that I went and looked up what guitar he played, and I saw it. Yeah, play, it was he's an SG. got basically your SG, and because it reminded me of the sound of my SG. <laughs> It's and I was thinking, like, I wonder yeah. if it's an SG. He's it's playing. basically the same guitar. His uh, the, the guitar. For those of you that don't know, Badfinger. Oh yeah. Check out Badfinger. Their band from yes. the like uh, sixty nine to, yeah, to to the, to maybe mid seventies. Mid seventies, yeah. and they had songs. Yeah, ba- no matter baby what Blue, you are, Baby Blue, Day After Day. These were massive hits. Um, if you if you watch Breaking come Bad, come and get it. Come and get it, right? Um, if you watch Breaking Bad, the yeah. end song, When Walt Dies, sorry to be a spoiler there, um, <laughs> Baby Blue is the song that plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which was an incredibly yeah. cool choice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, Badfinger, and it really a collected catalog, too. Like, all of their records were very different. So, um, okay, course, wait. So, what, wait, why did you sell this? <laughs> like, um, well, okay, it was a few things, but... Um, Long story short, uh, went to Mullen's house with my my dad and actually bought the guitar from him. Uh, he in the late, where did he live? He lived in uh, um, uh, Minnesota. Okay, St. Paul. And um, wait, where was Badfinger him? from? Uh, well, they were from England. But, yeah, I know. But, but um, why did he live in Minnesota? Uh, his mom lived there. Okay, and at That's the time, totally, yeah, I don't know the whole. Totally weird. Okay, yeah, so he went was, to his house. Yes, yeah, so went to his house. Um, and he had the SG there, and it was a 62 SG standard, like your 65. Yeah. He had put a stop tailpiece mod onto it. Uh, he took the, the original vibra that was on it was one of the sideways vibratos. Yeah. So he took that off and put a set of Grover gears on it. The rest of the guitar was fine. It wasn't broken, and it was a guitar that he used on everything from, yeah, like 70. Why was he selling it? He was broke. Okay. Um, Apple, uh, he didn't get any royalties from the Apple catalog after a while, and um, Badfinger was no longer around. Pete Ham had killed himself, and then the yeah. bass player had killed himself. Yeah. And so there was no Badfinger left, so Joey was really the only one left, and he still was doing a Badfinger tribute tri- band, kind of, but, yeah. but it was just him. And it was his main guitar, and, and he got, had gotten sick at the time, and uh, so he needed the money. You know, it was like, oh. like like we're talking here. Why do we sell it? Why do we need the money? So that's what he, you know, and um, and why did you sell it? <laughs> that's the real question. That's well, why we're here. Yes. Uh, so uh, the guitar was sold. I we sold the guitar. Me and my dad sold a guitar at a vintage show that we had a booth at in in 1987 at the Dallas show. Um, we debated on keeping the guitar. To be honest, it wasn't the greatest playing SG. Okay. It wasn't. It wasn't like one of. It wasn't like yours where you. Mine is. Where you just pick them like, oh man, this is. His guitar. It was nice, but it, I, I had owned a lot of other ones that were I thought way better guitars, honestly. Okay. Um, but um, at the time, Badfinger wasn't really that. It wasn't that big of a deal because Bat. Well, here you think about this. Okay, so Badfinger literally had three songs. Okay, on the radio. Mm-hmm. At the time, people knew who Badfinger was, but there wasn't this huge association at that time with like the Beatles thing. Some people knew that they were on Beatles records, but nobody yeah. was kind of eh, all right, whatever. You know, it wouldn't be like today, where it was like revered as like, oh my God, they were the first band signed to Apple, and like you know, it was it wasn't 
I hate to say it, he, he just wasn't that big of a player where it was like, you know, if I owned, uh, you know, some, uh, something ridiculous, you know, the Frampton Les Paul or something, you know, something that was so iconic. Yeah. It was a guitar that, it was one of his main guitars, but it wasn't like people would just go, oh my God, that's that yeah. Finger SG, okay? So it, it did get sold to the Hard Rock Cafe. That's who bought it. Um, it's in the Hard Rock collection now. It goes around the world and it's been shown okay. all over the place. So all right, it, well, that's, that's, that's at yeah, least... Yeah, it did go That's to, at least a good ending. Yeah, I, we, I didn't walk down to a pawn shop and sell it for 200 bucks because I needed crack money. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So my first, we, we decided we're going to pick five things yeah, here. Yeah. So my first regret is this JCM 800 that I had, a 1981 JCM 800 yeah. that I used in my band, Billionaire. Um, and I sold it. I bought it at Midtown Music in the, the mid 90s or so. Mm-hmm. And I sold it. I can't remember selling it. I don't remember <laughs> why in the world. I, was, I, I can't think of a reason why I I don't know I because sold I, it. of all the amps during that period that I knew you, that was the best one you had. Right. I mean, that was better. That's than, the best amp I've ever owned. Because you, because you bought your 2000 head after that, and I was kind of I like, bought that as a, sp- as a backup. And I was like, yeah. And, for life. And I was like, if you're going to sell anything, sell that. Don't sell the... <laughs> right. So I don't know why you sold it. And I don't know who you sold it to. I have no idea who I sold it to or why. <laughs> it was gone in the early 2000s, yeah. though. Somehow. And I do remember... It was, a, it was a good one. It was on the early, It was like an 81, 82 with the brown grill cloth. Yeah. It was, it was, it was a great, 81. Great remember sounding. that. I it was remember. unbelievably good sounding. Yeah. Amp. It was one of those ones. I, I But I don't know. And, and, and I, it if anyone out there knows, <laughs> if I sold it to anybody out there, I mean, yeah. back then you didn't sell stuff on eBay. It was early no. enough that I wouldn't wouldn't have sold no, it, it would, on eBay. No, we, it, we, you this probably, is pre eBay. It was, it was you traded in a yeah, store. Yeah, you either took it to a store, or you put it in the local paper. Yeah, and I never it. put it in the local paper, so I must take it to some store. What an idiot! Yeah, and like I said, I know I didn't buy it because I would I'd remember that. I was you know. so Dave worked at multiple stores that I used to go to all the time. <laughs> yeah, I worked at at all the stores you used at to all go the stores yeah, I used right, to go yeah. to. So and Dave Dave sold me a lot. Yeah, that's like true. anything that's good, true. Dave. Would tell me, oh, you need to buy this. Yeah, I'd call him and say, hey, man, I got something cool. You want to come over and look at it? You know? Okay, so what's 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 number two, Dave? Uh, number two for me was um, there was a guy named Chris Derrick who made uh, Les Paul replicas here in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And um, he was actually the guy who made Slash's Appetite for Destruction. Right. Um, That's why I know Les the name. Paul replica. Yeah. Um, well, I owned Chris's personal guitar that he would take around to people to show that his work and say like yeah. take orders from basically yeah well it was this it was the serial number before the one he made for slash so i actually had so when would this have been um the guitar would have been made um slashes was made like around um 86 85, 80, it would have been 85 okay um because Derek moved to la to go work for a store out there yeah. and um he went to go work for uh, max baronet and um so uh, and Slash basically they were cutting Appetite. He walks down the street, walks into that shop, and buys that guitar. So it's one of Derek's so people don't copies. realize this. The Slash did not play a Les Paul. Yeah, it wasn't a real Gibson. It was a Derrick, Chris Derrick, and um, and I was I had seen some of Chris's work because when I was uh, uh, seen, I saw some of his work uh, at some vintage shows. I saw a couple of his replicas, and and see nobody was doing. Hand built replicas at this time. No, it, the, Gibson was it. You didn't have anybody else doing this. Right. So Chris was one of the first. Like not fin- even the Chinese were doing. No, it. No, no, no. This was <laughs> the only guys that were doing stuff was like Tokai was making some copies and stuff in Japan, but yeah. not to this level. This was Chris was a fanatic. I mean, and he had real guitars to, to work off. And wh- of. wait, when did you have? When did you get rid of this? I bought the guitar. Well, this is funny. I bought the guitar. Um, um, it came through a shop that okay. I worked at. And I saw the guitar, and what's really crazy, trend events, I had seen the guitar at a vintage show six months before, and then it walked into a store that I was working at, and I was like, oh my God, that's the same guitar. Like, this has to be the same guitar, because it was really distinctive. There was things about it. And um, and so I bought the guitar, um, and knew what it was. I knew it was one of Derek's guitars, and unfortunately, Chris had passed away by this point. He died right after um, making actually Slash's guitar. It was like about a year or two after he had, he had passed away, and it was from breathing um, uh, nitro fumes. He would spray lacquer in his apartment, oh and because he didn't have a spray booth, and he would just breathe the fumes in. He just didn't know. 
I guess, and he died from from, oh the, from nitrous fumes or nitro lacquer fumes. Uh, but the guitar I owned was the one he built before he, the very one right before he built Sasha's guitar, and um, it came. If you look at Slash's top on his guitar and then look at the guitar I had, you could tell that the tops came from the same piece of wood, like the same piece of maple. He cut them very. They're very very close, and. Um, that's a guitar. Is it still the guitar Slash has too? Do you still have that guitar? Oh yeah, oh yeah. His that's, guitar, oh, that's yeah, his that's, main that's, guitar. Yeah, right? that's yeah, that's like his. Yeah, he'll you know, <laughs> that'll be in the Smithsonian when he grows. And it's not a Gibson. No, it's not a Gibson. And what's <laughs> funny is that guitar completely brought Gibson back to the fold with Les Pauls in the eighties. Right. And it wasn't a real Les Paul. That Everybody is, thought it was. That is amazing. Except a few people. I was like, it's fake. It's like you know. <laughs> and uh, the best part about all this was. The, I took that very guitar and I sold it to Dave Cobb and Dave Cobb owed it for a while and then he sold it to a friend of mine who called me later and said did you sell this to Dave Cobb and I said yeah he goes okay can you tell me the history of this guitar because I want to know all about it and I proceeded to tell him and then the guitar ended up in Germany uh, uh, there's a guy in Germany that owns all of Chris Derrick's guitars except for Slash's and one or two other ones Wow. so he, his whole thing was I want to own every Derrick Les Paul and he He's, he does. And my guitar's over there. So, um, But it was, that was a good Okay, well, that's yeah. a good spot to be, too, Dave. Yes. Th- those, those are okay. Now, see, I don't have... I have, I have d- Dave, I don't have any, any of my... All my gear is somewhere <laughs> out know. there. It's out... Well, you never... Hey, I don't ever... You know, I've had stuff where I thought I'd never see it again, and then 25 years later, it comes back. Okay, so, so my next guitar... My next thing is a guitar, number two. Yeah. Is my... White Les Paul that I had in the seventies, mid seventies Les Paul um, that I had in high school, and um, I. This is the reason why I bought this Les Paul custom recently because I've yeah. since the seventies I've wanted this again. So I traded it. I gave it to my brother, <laughs> my freshman year of college, uh, because I bought a three thirty five, and oh, that's legitimate. And, and he, um, and he sold the, this like 60s Les Paul black one that was my first guitar to somebody we I don't know the custom we, yeah <laughs> he doesn't know who he doesn't remember who it went to right I so I it. give him the guitar and then I thought okay he's gonna keep that guitar I, I'm gonna, yeah. I want it back I just let it let him use it or whatever so I come home one day from college and I was like where's the Les Paul oh I sold it what do you mean you sold it for what for this Kramer. <laughs> so he had a Kramer that he had this crappy Kramer that he still has that has sca- half the fingerboard scalloped oh, only, only from the 12th fret up on one side. And I love it. He still has that uh, guitar. And we've and he and I always well, there to remind you. Well, and we always <laughs> talk about how great he and I both talk about how great the White Les Paul was. And he oh, none, neither one of us That's awesome. well, I don't know where it went. He doesn't remember where it went either. We don't remember where the black one went. It probably went it probably well, House of Guitars, maybe, in Rochester. Yeah, it very well could have been. Probably That's pretty much there were two yeah. places. There was Northfield Music or Rizzo's music, but it's now Northfield Music, yeah, which Northfield. is a, yeah. which is a great sh- shop that yeah. my friend Joe Chapone has owned for thirty years. And uh hey Joe, if you're out there. And um and Joe's a great guitar player. Mm. It either went there, but probably the House of Guitars, because that's usually where we would trade stuff. I was gonna say that's that's where I remember Kramer's being. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's they, definitely Charvels and that. Kramer's. They were they had all. Yeah. That. yeah but so, but yeah. you would go trade guitars there, and I yeah. always get ripped off. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. I mean, oh, yeah, but White Les Paul custom for a Kramer. You know that you. Know I mean, that. what? <laughs> Dude, please tell me your 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 brother didn't give him money on top of it. I have no idea. I wouldn't doubt it. Wow. No, they probably said, "Oh, we'll do an even trade." Yeah, for that. right. Yeah, well, we'll do you a favor. Yeah, yeah. we'll do you a favor. Do an even trade. <laughs> oh, okay, fine. I love it. There yeah. must be some other story to that, but uh, yeah, right. Okay, so that's that's number. Well, two. you at least okay. Finally, did get one though because I did get one. You've been looking for one forever. I mean, even I've been telling Dave this for oh years. Yeah, years. And I bought yeah. that seventy four. I found them a great one, and they broke it. Yeah, Dave found me a great one online. Yeah, they so. they sent it. This is probably a year ago or so. Yeah. They sent it, it got here, and the headstock was completely yeah. snapped off. And honestly, I would have fixed the guitar, but at that point, it's like, 
just yeah, it was. You know, when you get you something, didn't, you didn't want to. You didn't want a broken one. No. So, yeah. I mean, there's no reason. Of, no, for, no, no, no. And you got a great that. one. That '90s great. So it's, yeah, it's fun. Okay, Dave. <laughs> number three. Um, number three. Well, my first guitar, which was a um, a red '66 Duosonic Fender, that um, my dad found in a newspaper. It was like seventy five dollars, and I told my dad that I wanted a guitar, and we got in the car. He went to the, this thing called the Bargain Post, which was this little paper. And found it, and we met this guy in the parking lot of a hotel. Of course. Of course. Yeah, a guy pulls up in a car, you know, and he pulls a guitar, but Dad's looking at it. And it's this really nice little 66 Dakota Red, you know, do a Sonic. I take it home, and I uh, just obliterate the thing. I mean, you know, like I really start beating it up, put stickers on it. I just played the crap out of it. And, um, and one day got the bright idea that I wanted to pull it apart. You know, and because and, I would watch my dad pull guitars apart, you know. And I'm like, at the time, dude, this is like, I'm like, you know, six you know, <laughs> nice. seven years old, you know. And um, so I just figured one day I'm going to come home and, and just pull my guitar apart. So I pull it apart, and I'm taking the pickups out, and I just rip everything out of the fucking guitar. And <laughs> it just ruined it. I mean, I broke the pickups. I broke the pots. You know, I didn't I did know, you know. And so my dad comes home, the thing's just in pieces. And he looks at me, and he's like, um, son, what, <laughs> what's going on here? I'm like, I don't know, Dad. I just want to pull it apart, you know. And so he said, well, the pickups don't work now, and so we're going to have to put new pickups in it. So he ended up just taking the guitar to his store. I think he pieced it together and just sold it and got me something else. Because at that point, I was like, I want something else, you know. So that guitar, I wish I still had. It wasn't anything super special just because it, outside of being the first guitar I had. And, I mean, actually now it's, it's, it's about a $2,000 guitar if it was in nice shape. But it, just because it was my first guitar, it was just, you know, I wish I still had it just to have it. I do have my first amp, but I don't have the guitar. Okay, well, I'm going to amend my list here okay. and say that my first guitar, which was a Penco 12 string that I wish I had. Yeah, there you go. I got it at this <laughs> shop called Music Lovers when I was 13. So my mom, my dad didn't want me to get a guitar. I, I had I had a $1 guitar that my got, my brother got from, from one of his buddies that I used to play when I first started. I can't remember what it was called. It was called the Global. It oh, was, Global, it was, yeah. It was made Dude, by, I had a Global. It was a uh, yeah. plywood top or something. Yeah, I, had a, I had a Global Classical. Man. Okay, so so I used to practice it on the front steps of, of our house, and I'd leave it outside, okay? <laughs> so my parents didn't want to buy me a guitar. My dad was like, why should we get your guitar? You're just going to leave it out in the front yard. <laughs> and I said, no. I said, this guitar is a dollar guitar. I promise I'm not going to leave it out in the front yard. So so my mom uh, said, okay, we're going to go to the music store and didn't tell my dad. So my mom and I go to this shop, Music Lovers, and I had never seen a 12-string before. So we're yeah, looking yeah. around at guitars, and I've just... I never been to a music store like that before yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to look at guitars. Yeah. My mom's like music lovers, not a guitar. It wasn't really, but you know, it was a big yeah. store. So I see this guitar, Penco twelve string. I was like, twelve string? What's that? My mom knew what a twelve string was, but I didn't know what a twelve. I mean, I, yeah. I kind of right. so I take it down. I start playing. I was, this is amazing, and my and it was a hundred and twenty dollars, I think. And uh, so this is in the mid seventies. And my mom said, my mom worked in the American Can Company, and she worked in, the, in a factory on the lines. And my dad worked for the railroads, so the, this was, it was a fortune. Yeah, that's to her. a lot of money. Yeah, right. So she said, okay, I'm going to buy you this. You got to promise me you're not going to leave it outside. You're going to take care <laughs> of it, and you're not going to tell your dad how much we paid for it. If he asks. I'm going to tell him it's none of his business. Oh, man. Wow. So, okay. um, go so mom. Mom bought me the Penco and I brought it home and I played that thing forever. I mean, I just ripped my fingers. I was going to say, I, I'm surprised. I learned leads on it. On a 12? On a 12. I learned and how that to play was a, lead. I, those are chunk necks, man. Dave, That's not I, a I've learned the solo to Stairway to Heaven on a 12 <laughs> string. Okay, bending the G string. <laughs> But don't forget, I was playing the bass at the time. I was yeah, playing right. upright. Yeah, well, okay. So I had, you know, yeah, fingers you, of steel. Yeah, yeah, okay, I get it, yeah. And I didn't but even still, realize yeah. how hard it was. Oh, man, that's awesome. So I'm awesome. playing all the time. So anyway, so th I actually know where the guitar went. This is actually a good thing. Oh, so, that's cool. So when I was in college or even later, uh, 10 years later, and the guitar was back home at my at my parents' house, and my mom was uh, was still working at the can factory, and she said, you know, there's this woman I work with. I was talking to her in the break room, and her son wanted a guitar, but they can't afford one. 
do you mind if I just give her that guitar of yours? And I said, no, go ahead. Yeah, and she okay. gave this guy, this That's kid, awesome. a guitar, gave that guitar. But I selfishly, and I shouldn't be selfish about this, I wish I had that guitar still. Well, but I'm glad it went to a good place. Right. I mean, yeah. At least, it, at least you didn't leave it outside. <laughs> no, and it had a three, a two piece back with a beautiful. I mean, it was yeah. really Mel. Well, yeah, like you said, one twenty nine. That was that was not a cheap guitar. Yeah, you know, what I mean, you know, all things considered, that it was, was it was seventies. You know, it was in the mid seventies. Yeah, so yeah. that was that was a medium price guitar. That yeah. was, you know, yeah, it wasn't. Don't tell your dad how much I got. It might have been one hundred and forty bucks. It was. Yeah. It was a fortune for my mom. I was going to say though, it, that was very cool of your mom to do that. Yeah. So you know. But yeah, well, but that's funny though because the the twelve string I would have never. Wow, yeah, that's I learned you know, on the twelve. Well, no string. wonder you got all this reach and stuff. It's like you know, I I, I just <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see you try to play stairway on that thing. Oh <laughs> man, bending that G, the two G strings, <laughs> on the the first part of it down low. Yeah, right. I mean, oh, that's oh, great. It was, it was, it was it. brutal. Okay, um, next one for me would be. Um, I had a amplifier that um, I, uh, it, my dad had a music store, and um, Cesar Diaz was a friend of my dad's for years. And um, we lived in Ohio. He was from Pennsylvania, and he used to come to the store a lot. And um, I knew him for years. And um, I got to the point where in the early 90s, um, he was making amplifiers. He was making amplifiers for uh, G. Smith and um, a whole bunch of other people at the time, and uh, David Lindley and some other people, I think. And um, I always wanted one of his amps, and, and he was custom making all kinds of stuff at the time. And I told him, I said, I said, man, I want a hundred, basically a hundred watt kind of plexi style amp, uh, Marshall type thing. Actually, not even a plexi. I wanted more of a, a, an aluminum front style, uh, which is a little hotter front end, more gain. Yeah. And um, I said, you know, I said, I really want to order one from you. I said, you know, how long would it take? And he said, well, he said, I'm on back order right now. But he said, you know, probably about a year. And I said, okay, well, let me save some money up and I'll, I'll get one. So. He sent me a brochure, which I still have, which is kind of cool. And um, he was a really funny guy. Caesar was a real nut job, dude. He was he was something else, you know. And uh, he was Steve Rivlin's tech, and it was cool because he I learned a lot from Caesar. He showed me all kinds of stuff that was you know inside stuff, you know, which was real cool. So he made me this amp. And oh, and it. by the way, I don't hate Stevie Ray Vaughan. I don't know why no. people think, people say in the comments all the time, Rick, why do you hate Stevie Ray Vaughan? It's I, like, I love Stevie Ray Vaughan. I have no idea. I mean, it was kind of the same thing with, I got, well, why don't you talk about Roy Gallagher? It's like, I love Roy Gallagher. I love Johnny Winter. I, I love, get that too. Roy Gallagher. Well, don't worry. Thing. We'll mention it. We got to do some more okay, videos, so, obviously. So we're, so. so we're talking about yes, this. Right? I, okay. I, I love Stevie Ray Vaughan. I saw Stevie Ray Vaughan twice. I mean, I knew Caesar. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I invented strats forever. I mean, yeah. I was a huge Steer fan. Okay. All right. So what was okay. what was special about this? So amp? I so I had to, had him build this amp, and it was a CD100, uh, which was a you know he was the only one. He, it was just him in his shop. He didn't have a production line. So every amp was hand built. Yeah. And so um, at the time he had just um, the band Live had called him and found out about his amps through G Smith, I think, and. Um, they ordered uh, two CD100 heads like mine, and I wanted red Tolex on mine. So I, I told him, I said, I, and he had rolls of this really cool old red Tolex that he got from Jim Marshall when he went to the Marshall factory in the, the mid-80s. And he went over there, and Jim just gave him this huge roll. He said, just take it. He said, Nobody's ever, we're never going to use this. Nobody orders red Tolex. And, you know, and he was like, oh, great. So he brought this roll back from England with him. <laughs> and I knew he had that roll. And I said, I said, Caesar, you got to cover in that red Tolex for me. He was like, yeah, okay, great. Man, it'll be awesome. He said, you'll, be, you'll have the only one that has red. Well, I get this call a little bit later from him. And he said, um, well, the band Live, they're going to be on SNL. They saw your amp on my bench in red Tolex, and they said, we want red Tolex, you know, or that's what he told me. And he said, um, so I'm building them two half stacks or full stacks, and there was two 412 cabinets and the head. Um, and so I said, well, uh, cool, great. He said, well, is there any way um, I can, they need three amps. Would you let them use your amp on SNL to do the show so that everything is complete and matches and all this stuff. And I said, yeah, as long as they don't blow it up, I'm cool with that. So they, it was on SNL when um, we live played. So I'm looking at these cool shots. And, and what was great was Caesar um, used to give G. Smith amps. So you would see Diaz amps in the shots in and out sometimes, um, you know, going to commercial. 
And so that helped his business by a ton. And so it was cool to see all Diaz amps on that one particular show that night. And wait, where is this amp now, Dave? <laughs> so, oh, so I get this, I get the head. I love the amp. I used it quite a bit. And then I started to realize, one, it weighed a ton because the transformers were huge. Yeah. It. And I really couldn't open it up very much. And it was, it had a master volume, but it, you had to crank it. I mean, it was that type amp. Um, it's the same amp that Warren Haynes uses. It, you ever see him live? He's got that thing dimed out. Um, so it just became a thing where it was like, it was just too much. I couldn't use it uh, at the time. And uh, <laughs> I don't know why, but I found a BC Rich Eagle. Oh, geez. Uh, Koa Eagle that I wanted really bad. It was a nice guitar. Um, so I just said, all right, well, I'll send the head up to you. I'll keep the cabinet and I'll send the head. So I traded this, this Caesar Diaz thing. Oh, my thing. God. Well, this, because you got, got Dave, a, this is like my brother. I know, but you got to understand. Okay, one, he was still alive. So okay. Caesar was still around. So I figured, well, you know, I can call him up and get another one. He's still got more red right. If I really want, I can, you know. And there was one or two things about the amp I actually wanted to change. So I was going to send it back to him and modify it anyway. So I figured, well, maybe I'll just keep, buy another one, you know. Well, of course, I sell the amp, I get the BC Rich, and then like eight months later, Caesar died. Yeah. And so I was instant. And, and the, the thing about it is he signs every amp inside. Well, in the inside of this amp, it's signed. It was built for me. It says built for Dave Honorado, Caesar oh Diaz. So it's signed inside the amp. I don't know where the amp is, but somebody so has if anyone amp. out there knows yes. where this amp is, let yes, us know. Yes, I can tell you the oh. whole history about it. Okay, so this next piece of gear for me. Oh, and by the way, the BC Rich, I ended up selling because I needed rent. Okay, so the next amp, the next thing I have is an amp, but it's a complete, it's a full half stack, and it mm. was, it was in, I bought it from Dave. Well, I yeah. got it, yeah, I got it from, yeah, yeah from, I got it yeah. from Dave at this place, Midtown Music, which was the best music store here in Atlanta years ago, yeah. and it was a white custom 100 high watt. And um, yeah. just beautiful. How many of those did they make, Dave? Um, I ordered the amp in that color, and there was, I know there's less than 10. I think there was five with the cabinets and the head. Okay, was, so yeah. so I will say, I don't know why I sold this. I don't know I don't who know I sold it to. I don't know. I you sold okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. This is I, I'm I am a little bit obsessive compulsive. I'll tell you why. What one thing that bugged me. This is <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know what you're gonna say. All right, go but, ahead. No, yeah, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. I got some amp with rubber <laughs> feet on it, and it got it stained the Tolex on the 412 cab, and I obsessed about that. I tried everything I could oh, to get oh that God. out. And I freaked out about it, and I want—I just wanted to get rid of it. I, I remember because I, so, I knew I was like, "It's those rubber feet. It has to be." Yeah, I—I I, I got so mad. <laughs> Someone actually put it. Some idiot in a band <laughs> put it on my put their amp with rubber feet yeah. on my white Tolex oh, and and it marked it up, and it was impossible to well, get out. No, I, I do remember they were the little brown round marks. Yeah, yes. and and it. I don't know, man. Dave, I, I freaked out at that. It to me that it, the amp became worthless. It's ruined. No, I just, delicate genius. I can't I, deal with it. I couldn't. It was so pristine. The, the head well, was yeah, still fine. Bought, well, you bought it new. It was, yeah, it was brand new. I, I I don't know, man, because I came over and I was like, "Where's the white highway?" You're like, "Oh, I sold that." I'm, I'm like, and I'm, of course I'm thinking he's joking. Dave, I shipped. I sold yeah. the pieces separately, I think, because oh. I, I, I kept the cabinet for oh, a couple, well, for that about was, a year or so. That's even worse. I know. And then I sold the cabinet. I remember I shipped the cabinet. I sold it on eBay, and I actually got a box for that. <laughs> <laughs> I took that to, to, to UPS oh, in a box. It cost you probably $300. It did. Oh, I totally didn't. I lost my, I mean... Oh, well, I, I sold it for... Well, here's the, the thing about it. it. Okay, one, it took eight months to get that out. Right. Because when we ordered it, we they ordered, were so back ordered. They were back ordered. Um, they were way behind in production, and the custom colors were more money. They and the face plates matched the Tolex. So yeah. you're, you're, they had to custom make those. This was uh, in the early 2000s. Yeah, it was a white, complete white hundred with the matching cabinet. Everything we had uh, white, red, and then the Union Jack um, British flag one. Yeah, and. I was the one who put the orders Dave in for was, it. Dave was Dave because I worked for this music store. I actually had bought another amp yeah. from there. A cust it was a it was a high watt twenty forty, I think it was called. Yeah. They had a switch on it. Yeah. And that one I traded in at Guitar Center. I have no idea. I think because I was broke. 
And the guys told me the next week that Joe Walsh came in 10 minutes after I left, played through it, and bought the amp. So my fifth one was uh, I had, me and my dad had a 1954 Strat, um, first, first month of production, and it was number 22 Strat ever made. So it was, this was before they actually serialized him on the neck plate. Uh, they actually serialized the first hundred on the tremolo cover, the plastic tremolo cover. And it was, look what, they used like a little stamp and it kind of looked like a typewriter. And it, so it was like 0122, you know, on this little plastic plate. And the plate was still there, it was totally intact. Um, the guitar was basically still kind of a prototype, prototype type thing because the uh, tremolo arm was longer than a normal one. The uh, end of the tip wasn't plastic, it was actually metal that had been dipped in white paint. Okay. Um, and what was really cool is it was a hex screw on the back of where the bar, where you would normally screw the bar in. There was a hex screw on the bottom that you would tighten it down and the, and the bar wouldn't move. Um, one piece ash, really grained out ash body, two tone sunburst. Guitar was really clean. And what was amazing was that we got the original amp with it, the 115 basement that went with it, the thermometer case, and the zip cover that went around the thermometer case. So we owned the 22nd Strat ever made. That one went to um, a big collector uh, dealer in New York, uh, Lou Gatanis, who's still around. Um, he no longer has the guitar, but he ended up with it. I think it went to a big collection after that. Um, so that one was a big one. Um, you know, we didn't sell it for the rent, but it was... How, you know, how much would that guitar be worth now? With the entire package, with the amp, everything, probably uh, that early, uh, it's... It's hard to say. I mean, I, I think to the right guy would be probably a hundred thousand dollar guitar, you know, with the amp and the cover and the case. And so, so I'm complaining about losing a hundred and forty dollar guitar. <laughs> well, we didn't we didn't sell it for a hundred grand. I mean, it, at the time, I, I think that guitar got sold for in the neighborhood of probably five thousand know, dollars. Okay. So yeah. Thank God. Yeah. No. No. It was you know. I mean, there's other guitars. We had two broadcasters. We had a 58 Burst. We had an Explorer. I mean, there's other guitars, believe me. But that one, as far as significant, I mean, geez, man, that's, you know, it's basically a prototype, you know, strap. Okay, so we want to know what gear you sold that yes. you regret and why you sold it. So put it in the comments. <laughs> Remember to subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're a first-time viewer, don't forget to ring the bell. Yes. Follow Dave on Instagram at... Dojo Guitar Repair. Follow me on Instagram at RickBeato1. And, and I have merch. Dave has merch, so check out Dave's T-shirts. Yes, and mugs. And mugs. Yes. Go to my store, support the channel, buy the Beato book, or uh, or buy a mug or something also. And <laughs> we'll be seeing you guys at the NAMM show yeah. in, uh, in a few weeks. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Oh,